Every year the Earth's climate grows hotter and a drought spreads across the planet. Water is becoming more expensive than gold, and people are now willing to do anything to survive. At the beginning of the story, we discover an abandoned farm in the middle of a lifeless desert. Several years have passed since the last rain. From the window of the ruined building, a girl named Kendall peers out. She looks out into the distance through a spyglass. After making sure the horizon is clear, she cautiously runs into the barn. Hidden inside is a pump that pumps out precious leftover drinking water. Kendall fills the can with water, takes some cereal from the box, and returns home. A guy named Dean, with whom Kendall lives in the attic of the house, is studying the blueprints for a car distributor. The girl leaves the water and cereal in their little room and sets off across the vast wilderness. Kendall surveys the terrain, seeing the bodies of those who have passed away from thirst out in the sand. Keeping her rifle at the ready, she approaches another abandoned farmhouse. She finds an empty jar at the entrance and pours some water into it. Kendall makes her way to the hangar where an airplane is located. In order for it to take off, it lacks only one part, a suitable distributor. The girl tries to plug in the one she has, but nothing works. Back at her farm, Kendall informs Dean of the failure. The guy says that they will surely find another distributor. The girl turns on the radio, over which she listens to messages from unfortunate and thirsty people. Hired after a hard day, Kendall falls asleep. The next morning, the girl wakes up to a sharp sound. Dean looks out the window, and suddenly they hear voices of some people about to check out the building. Frightened, Kendall and Dean grab their guns and prepare to defend themselves. The uninvited guests have come to the farmhouse looking for water. They can't find it, so they walk away. The wayfarers, however, are far from the main threat to the young companions. The danger has passed, and the girl goes out again to fetch water from the barn. On the way back, Kendall suddenly discovers a strange girl in the house and immediately points a shotgun at her. The girl is thirsty and asks for water. Kendall holds out a jar of the precious liquid to her. The stranger is wounded and exhausted, but is still determined to keep going, for she must get to her sister. Suddenly a gunshot is heard. Kendall looks outside and sees the guys who were looking for water being shot. The stranger who got separated from them tells Kendall to get out, because these men are after all survivors. Kendall replies that she has a plan and will stay at the farm. The girl gives the stranger water and a knife and wishes her good luck on her journey. Kendall once again sets out into the desert. Here the girl meets a friend named Gabriel. They stop to rest for a while. Kendall remembers with regret that this place used to be rice fields, and hopes that it will rain again someday. Suddenly the guy decides to kiss Kendall, but she pulls away. The girl asks if he really found the remains of the plane. Gabriel replies that he saw it at the edge of a field near the pumping station. It would take two weeks to get there. The girl thanks Gabriel and leaves. Kendall runs over and sneaks closer to the pumping station of Baron Carson and his henchmen. They now control all the remaining water and are wiping out any survivors. Hiding in some withered bushes, she observes what is happening in the enclosed area. The girl sees a huge truck pull up to the station and they start pumping water out of it. Kendall returns home late at night. She and Dean are resting and looking at the globe. Kendall dreams of them flying to distant lands where there is water, plants, and animals. Over the radio, Kendall picks up more messages from the people on the neighboring farm. They are frightened and ask for help. Kendall packs up and heads out to go help them. Dean is worried about the girl, but he can't stop her. Kendall cautiously makes her way into the house. The bandits are already waiting there. It turns out that the radio signals were a trap. The other survivors were supposed to respond to them, come to the rescue and fall into a trap. Carson and his gang ruthlessly dispose of the entire family and thoroughly search the farm. Kendall hides in a dark corner in terror and hopes not to be seen. If they're alive, they're consuming my water. The girl miraculously manages to escape from the farm unnoticed. The next day, Kendall continues to explore the desert. She discovers an abandoned car and decides to take the distributor out of it, hoping it will be suitable for an airplane. The girl tries to connect the wires to it, but even that attempt proves unsuccessful. Kendall comes to check on a boy named Albie. She leaves water outside his house for him every day. He lives all alone on one of the nearby farms. Kendall says that she and Dean have found an airplane, and suggests that he join them. Albie replies that it is safer to live alone. After making sure the boy is doing well, Kendall leaves. The girl returns home and fetches water for Dean. She takes a journal of the orphanage from the shelf, where their names are recorded. However, while Kendall is an only child, Dean has a sister written in the journal. Kendall informs Dean that there has been a problem with the valve and now there is virtually no water flow coming through. Dean proposes that Kendall sneak back to the base at night, get as much water as possible there, and go to his uncle. He lives a few weeks away from the farm. Dean himself is very sick and doesn't have long to live, and without water his kidneys will fail even faster. But Kendall refuses to leave Dean alone. The girl is determined to find the missing part for the plane. Once again, a transmission comes in from one of the farms. The people summon Carson. They believe he will help them move to a better place. Kendall heads to the farm. On the way, 
she finds an empty water can. A little farther away, she spots a lifeless body. Kendall runs closer and realizes that this is the same girl who was looking for water on her farm. Unfortunately, she didn't make it. As she walks further, she sees Gabriel and his family. They are burying their relative by covering him with sand. Grace, one of the family members, informs Kendall that the well on their farm has dried up and there is nothing else keeping them here. They were the ones who called the Baron on the radio, for he can settle them in his camps, where there is still water. Gabriel suggests that the girl join them and says that Carson has a cure for Dean. Kendall is skeptical of such an offer. Then Grace suggests that Kendall use the rest of the water in the house, for they are determined to leave with the Baron. Kendall approaches the house to draw some water. Carson appears with his men. Kendall quickly hides behind a wall. Grace thanks Carson for coming for them and tells him that they are unarmed and ready to go. But Carson suddenly pulls out a gun and shoots first Grace and then the rest of the family. That leaves only the frightened Gabriel, whom Carson does not touch. He intends to use the boy as free labor. The Baron explains to him that there is not enough water for everyone and that his relatives would not survive anyway. Gabriel is asked if anyone else is left on the farm. The boy realizes that his life depends on his answer. He honestly admits that there is one other person left. Carson's gang searches the farm, using heat sensors. After ascertaining that there is someone in the house, they shoot poison gas into it. A young man actually runs out of the house, who is immediately shot by Carson's daughter. Kendall, on the other hand, manages to hold her breath and not reveal herself. Gabriel is asked if anyone else is still in the building, and he doesn't give Kendall away after all. The girl gets out the other side of the house and runs away. Suddenly, a gang member gets in her way. Kendall takes a blow to the head with a rock, but still manages to take out her enemy. <laughs> Upon returning home, Kendall realizes that water is no longer coming from their well. She decides to lie to Dean that everything is still fine. It's just that the pump is not working as well as it should. Dean says it's because the Baron's outfit is pumping all the water out of their wells. Because of the water problems, Dean suggests that Kendall call Carson after all. Maybe his company's camps aren't so bad. But Kendall explains to him that the Baron isn't really helping anyone. Carson simply takes out all remaining settlers. At night, Kendall pours water from her jar into Dean's jar. The boy notices it. Now he realizes that the situation with the water is worse than Kendall had assured him. The girl also decides to take out the jar of canned fruit that she has been saving for Christmas. She realizes that Dean may not live to see the holiday. Dean apparently senses the end coming too and decides to go to his sister's grave. He asks Kendall to promise him that when his time comes, she will burn his body. That way nothing will hold her back and she can go to his uncle. Kendall doesn't want to think of anything bad, but still promises to honor his request. They return home. The girl helps Dean lie down and leaves again. As soon as Kendall leaves the house, she spots one of Carson's men. She manages to hide, but then suddenly notices the jar of fruit left at the entrance to the house. Kendall cautiously picks up the jar from the doorstep so that it does not give away the presence of people in the house. But the gang still won't leave. Carson orders that the house be searched and the gas be turned on. Kendall hides in the attic. When she tries to get to the room with Dean, the floorboards creak. The girl miraculously manages to get into the room. Kendall and Dean cover themselves with a thermal blanket to avoid being spotted by the heat sensors, and put on gas masks. The gas fills the room. After clearing the house, the gang is about to leave. Brooke, Carson's daughter, finds the lid from the fruit jar. She realizes that people have been here recently, despite the fact that they have found no one in the house. Brooke notices the window under the roof, but does nothing. The gang heads for the next house. Kendall and Dean have survived. The girl runs out of the house to get water for her friend. Soon, she leaves him again and gets close to Carson's gated community. In the sand, Kendall spots human bones. She examines them and does not notice as one of the bandits rises from the sand behind her. He attacks the girl. Kendall manages first to wound the bandit with an axe and soon after to finish him off with the gun. Kendall runs away from the base and goes into Albie's place again. He closely monitors the movements of Carson's men. I watch them in the shadows, waiting for me to make a mistake. I won't make a mistake. The serious boy asks Kendall not to come to him, for his farm is constantly being checked. Kendall promises to come for Albie when their plane is ready and they can fly away. The boy doesn't believe it will all work out and says that promises mean nothing. Kendall returns home. She sees Dean sound asleep and uses the mirror to check if the lad is breathing. After making sure everything is okay, the girl switches the lights out. The following morning, she surveys the area with her spyglass. Suddenly, Kendall notices three wayfarers heading toward their farm. The frightened girl goes up to Dean and informs him of the strangers. Kendall wants to just hide and wait. They won't find anything in the house, which means they won't stay long. But Dean offers to give the men the water they surely need. Kendall hesitates, because it might be a trap set by Carson. Dean clarifies if they really still have plenty of water. 
Kendall doesn't want to upset Dean, so she confirms that there is enough water and agrees to get the travelers some water. The girl leaves Dean her gun in case of danger and goes to meet the guests. Kendall cautiously looks out of the window and observes the people. They are exhausted and unlikely to make it to the next farm unless they find water. The girl goes out to them with her rifle at the ready. The frightened strangers beg not to shoot them and ask for water. They claim they have nothing to do with Carson and know how he deals with survivors. Kendall doesn't trust them anyway. Holding them at gunpoint, the girl tells the strangers to step away from the house and tosses them a flask of water. They thank Kendall and ask how many more people are on this farm. The cautious girl replies that she is the only one here. The travelers insistently ask her to join them, but Kendall refuses. The girl tells Dean how her meeting with the people went. Suddenly he asks her what happened to their well. He suspects something is wrong when he notices Kendall pouring her water to him. The girl admits that they only have a week's supply of water left. Kendall realizes that their only chance of survival is to sneak into the pumping station. Dean says it's very dangerous, but the girl is determined to break into the restricted area anyway. He comes up with an idea on how to distract the guards. What's the one thing they fear in a world without water? Using a slingshot, the girl starts a fire on the station premises. The workers deal with the unexpected situation, and in the meantime, Kendall creeps up to a vehicle and takes the distributor from it. She compares the part to the blueprint and makes sure it works this time. Happy, Kendall runs into their room and joyfully informs Dean that she's managed to get the right distributor. She tells Dean that she will carry him in her arms if necessary. Now she has to wait until dark, and then she can head out. She kisses Dean and goes to fetch water for the road. Kendall fills the jar with water, but all of a sudden, she senses that something is wrong. She looks around, and turns out that the strangers have returned, and with ill intentions at that. Kendall takes a blow to the head and loses consciousness. The strangers are about to get rid of the gullible girl. When Kendall wakes up, she sees that a gun is pointed at her. A shot is fired, but it is Dean, who manages to save her friend at the last moment. Barely standing up, he takes out all the uninvited guests. Dean struggles to get to the barn to help Kendall, when suddenly the figures of Carson and his bandits appear not far from the house. He helps his friend hide in the car and heads towards the gang himself. Dean tells them that there is no one left on the farm and that he got rid of everyone in a struggle for the rest of the water. Carson is surprised that such a weak guy could defeat several healthy men. The Baron tells him that he always knew there were people on this farm because of the birds. They live where there is water. Carson reminds him that everything belongs to him now, the land and the water. Meanwhile, the gang has already checked the house, and now heads out to inspect the barn. Dean manages by surprise to shoot several of the bandits, but the weakened fellow is unable to defeat them all. Carson and Brooke get rid of Dean by shooting him in the chest. The gang thoroughly searches the barn. Carson and one of his associates argue that it's nobody's fault that there isn't enough water for everybody. If Carson hadn't become the ruler of the territory, there would be someone else in his place who would do the same to people. No one notices Kendall in the car, not even Brooke, who comes very close to take a look at herself in the mirror. Carson's daughter assures her father that no one is here and that it's time for them to move on. Kendall gets out of the car and runs to a nearby farmhouse. She winds up outside her friend Gabriel's house. There she finally quenches her thirst. Kendall approaches the place where Gabriel's family buried their relative. He has been covered in sand along with his sword, and now Kendall pulls out his weapon to fight her enemies. The girl returns to her house, where one of Carson's men remains. With her sword she slits his throat. Kendall loads the shotgun and cautiously goes inside. Two more bandits come down from the attic, and Kendall successfully takes them out. She recognizes Gabriel as one of them. Finally, Kendall approaches Dean's body. She drags him inside and sets fire to the house. On the next morning, Kendall gets to the plane and plugs in the distributor. She calls for Albie, but no one answers. The girl realizes that Carson and Brooke have been here too. She fears that the same thing that happened to Dean might have happened to the boy. Kendall rushes to the pumping station. The girl sees Albie on the other side of the fence. The girl makes her way into the enclosed area through a deep black puddle. Here she takes out all the workers, shooting each of them with precision. The girl wounds Carson and his daughter Brooke, but at this point the gun runs out of ammunition. Carson tells Kendall that he is glad she finally stopped hiding and came to him. He informs the girl that she is pretty much the last survivor, but he will have to get rid of her as well, because his daughter doesn't like competition. Carson and Kendall engage in a fight, and the girl quickly defeats the Mad Baron, which leaves only Brooke. She is determined to destroy her rival. Brooke knocks the sword out of Kendall's hands, grabs her by the hair, and slams her head several times against the wall. She chokes Kendall, who is already starting to lose consciousness. But at the last moment, Kendall gathers her strength and fights Brooke back. The girl reaches for her sword and plunges it right into her stomach. Kendall frees Albie, and now the two of them are heading for the plane. Albie asks the girl if Dean will go, but Kendall replies that he will stay here. Do you think they will be able to start a new life, or will they have to fight for survival again wherever they go? Share your thoughts in the comments, give us a like and subscribe to the channel. 
See you in our next videos.